Hi everyone, Ed from Bobble Vans here. Today we're in the workshop and we're going to upgrade the workshop heater. We've been running a 5 kilowatt Chinese diesel heater for about a year now. It's been absolutely fine, but the bearings are starting to make a very strange noise. Uh, so we don't think it's got long left. We're going to replace it with a 4 kilowatt auto turn. This one actually kicks out a bit more heat than the Chinese one, even though it's actually rated at a lower power. The Chinese marketing, not quite as accurate as you'd like it to be. Um, brushless motors, so hopefully we'll get a lot more life out of this one than we will have got out of the Chinese. However, the purpose of this video isn't actually to go over the install of the heater, it's actually to go over this. Um, this is something I bought from eBay a couple of years ago, it's been knocking around in the shed ever since I bought it, haven't had time to install it. This is an exhaust gas recirculation uh, system. So essentially, your exhaust gas is coming this way and come out this way, water goes in this way, comes out this way, water goes in cold, comes out hot, and what I'm going to do then is put that through a little radiator in the workshop with a fan, and I'm going to try and recover all of that lost heat. Uh, I don't like burning fossil fuels. If I have to, to keep warm, I'd rather be as efficient as possible. So by rec reclaiming some of the energy that we're losing through the exhaust, we should be able to make the workshop a little bit warmer. So let's see how we get on. So it's now dark, but the installation is complete. Uh, I'd love to show you this in the light, but this is winter in Britain and it's pretty much always dark. So you can see there, the exhaust comes out straight into the EGR uh, cooler and my silicon hose comes out of the wall, that's out of the pump and that pumps upstream. So the pump is going from the end of the exhaust towards the heater, that should give me the most efficiency. Everything's set up, we're down here in the dusty corner of the workshop, just to recap what we've got. We've got the line which is going to come from the exchanger into a little pump, that goes out to the EGR cooler, that gets pumped through the exhaust, picking up all that energy. It comes back out through the wall just behind the tank here, comes around here, into the exchanger which is going to heat up, and then back out and then back down to the pump. Uh, at the moment there's no water in here, so the thing to do is to fill it full of water. For that I've just got um, a little pump here, so no idea what's going to happen, but if I run this, you should be able to now suck the water through. There we go. So now we're full of water up to here. So I'm hoping now, if I just take this hose, take this hose, and there we go, ready to go. So one thing I've had to add here is a miniature header tank. Uh, sponsored by the people at Quaker Oats. Um, this just allows a bit of pressure release and it also means that any air in the system should be able to bubble its way up out to the atmosphere. So at the moment the pump, I don't know if you can hear it, is struggling just a little bit to get rid of all the air. Um, but I think for a little trial I think this is fine. So let's try and be a bit more sciencey about this. At the moment we're measuring the heater outlet at 108 degrees. Um, it's been running about 20 minutes or so, I've got my header tank, but I've also got this very long tube um, and we're going to use that for measuring water temperature. Essentially I've got a, a 3 meter thermocouple and I'm going to drop this into both sides of the heat exchanger and I'm just going to see what the temperature comes out. Here we go. So here's my probe, if I start with this side, try and push this down as far as I can. So hopefully we're somewhere down at this T now. So that's pretty consistent at 38.8 Celsius. Pretty stable. If I hold my finger on the pipe, 
can see roughly where that would have gone down to. So that's gone pretty much all the way to the bottom of the pump inlet. So I'll do the same up here. We just move this up. It's going to be a long pipe because the water pressure coming back up here is pushing water up this tube. So if this isn't a very long pipe, then I get very wet and there's water all over the floor. So we'll go all the way down as far as we can. So already now we're up above where we were before. So that's 40.5. Seems pretty stable again, 40.4. So yeah, there's not a huge difference between the two temperatures, but that's good. This pump is capable of six and a half liters a minute. Um, so if it was genuinely raising that by by three degrees, that would be an output of about 1,800 watts or something like that, maybe two kilowatts, and that seems a bit a bit ridiculous. So. I think I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty steady. Sometimes I'm getting these fluctuations. I don't really know why that is. My feeling is that there's still a little bit of air somewhere in the system and the impeller on the pump spins. Um, or there's a blockage somewhere. I, I don't quite know. Um, but what I do know is that this is working pretty well. So what do we think? Overall, really happy with the result. All those decaying dinosaurs that have fossilised and have now been dug up and turned into fossil fuels are going a little bit further than they would have done before. Um, when I did this experiment on a 5 kilowatt Chinese heater, I was getting about maybe six, 700 watts of wasted heat. So if I can reclaim 500 of those for no extra money, I'm really happy. Um, in terms of money, there obviously was a bit of investment in the kit. I needed a pump. Uh, some silicon tube, the EGR valve, uh, EGR um, cooler, and the exchangers and the adapters. Because um, we're bubble vans, we have most of this stuff lying around already. The cooler was the only thing that I didn't have, which was twelve ninety five off eBay, and it was off a of Toyota Avensis uh, two thousand uh, to two thousand and fourteen model. Um, but I mean, they're all the same just find one that looks like it fits and cut the ends off. That's all I did. Um, so there's a little bit of money to spend. You might spend 30, 40 quid on parts. But if you're using your heater day in, day out like we are, hopefully this will pay for itself pretty quickly. Um, I've put the radiator on the inlet of the heater. The reason for doing this is that I didn't want to run an extra fan. And I know that with the autoterm heaters, they move a lot of air. The fans are really powerful, uh, significantly more powerful than on the Chinese ones. So I know that if I put this in front, I'm not gonna cook anything in the heater. If I was to do this on a Chinese heater, I suspect that I would overheat the, um, the burner at the back, uh, the heat exchanger. So if I was doing this on a Chinese one, I'd probably go down this route, which is to have a separate radiator and a separate fan. Uh, put this somewhere else and just turn this on once the pump comes on. The next steps, obviously this was a very rough and ready does it work experiment. Uh, so the answer to that is yes. The next steps are going to be to tidy this up, um, obviously make it a bit more uh, workshop proof. My header tank is massively exposed and will be full of dust in no time. Um, and outside I need to tidy the cables up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so please don't think this was a massively scientific experiment. It really wasn't. Uh, I don't have, you know, internationally standard calibrated instruments. But one thing I do know is that I'm getting energy for free. So by all means, absolutely do this yourself. Uh, it was good fun. Um, yeah, play around. Uh, and if you have a go at this, then let us know how you get on.